And now for the last look. Until just a few weeks ago, the biggest weather story in California was the state's years-long drought. Reservoirs had been drained close to empty. Crops were devastated. And officials were asking residents to conserve water in all kinds of ways. Today, California has the opposite issue, too much water. In a matter of days, a series of brutal storms rocked the state, dropping more than a dozen inches of rain in places. San Francisco has clocked its third wettest 15-day period in recorded history. And the rain hasn't stopped. Now, that sounds like good news, and in some senses, of course, it is. But there is a problem. The damage in the Golden State from this outbreak of H2O looks like it may cost more than $1 billion. And these destructive storms are not just happening in California. The state's chaotic start to the new year continues a broader trend of costly weather events in recent years. In fact, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration documented 18 separate billion-dollar weather and climate disasters in 2022. These events resulted in the deaths of at least 474 people and caused more than $165 billion in total damages. And these billion-dollar events are now happening more frequently in the United States, too, around every 18 days, compared with every 82 days in the 1980s. Two events in 2022 in particular stood out for the sheer scale and costs of their destruction. In mid-September, Hurricane Fiona crashed into Puerto Rico, bringing with it 30 inches of rain, widespread blackouts, and further damage to the territory's infrastructure, already reeling from being hit by Hurricane Maria in 2017, which caused more than $100 billion in damage. Also in September, Hurricane Ian, the most intense storm of the season, was also the most expensive, raining down an eye-watering $113 billion in damage, along with its 150 mile per hour winds. The cost of Ian's destruction rivals some of the biggest storms in recent memory, including Hurricane Katrina. It was also Florida's deadliest storm in nearly a century. And these were only the events in the United States. Last year's flooding in Pakistan caused more than $30 billion in damage and economic losses, according to the World Bank. And while Europe's summer heat wave had a big human toll, with statisticians estimating around 20,000 excess deaths caused by the rising mercury, it also had an economic cost. Researchers estimate that heat waves in Europe over the past decade have lowered GDP by as much as 0.5%. Such extreme weather events highlight the gravity of our current climate fight. You see, when we talk about climate change, we often talk about ways to prevent future climate change, failing to consider the damage unfolding right in front of our eyes. When big storms hit, communities regroup and rebuild often without any concern for the next billion-dollar weather event around the corner. In many cases, our typical post-disaster recovery plans fail to earmark enough investment in adaptation and prevention, likely dooming those communities to relive the nightmare again at some point. Then there's the case of one Florida town where efforts to become more resilient to threats were rolled back in a matter of years. After being brutally beaten by Hurricane Michael in 2018, Officials in the town of Mexico Beach, Florida, vowed to rebuild in a smarter way. Building codes were changed to require new houses to be built higher. Two years later, after a number of complaints about costs from residents, the new building code requirements were walked back, with local building requirements barely inching above the states. One floodplain management consultant told the Miami Herald that it was hard to watch a community that learned the hard way and made the right decisions suddenly backpedal because their memory became so short. The fact is that too many homes are built in harm's way. There should be clear disincentives to build in floodplains, drought-prone areas, and wildfire zones. Until now, it hasn't been politically viable to tell communities not to rebuild after such trauma. But taxpayers may soon tire of footing the bill as storms grow stronger, wetter, and more destructive. <laughs> Costs will only continue to rise with sea levels. Climate change is here, and it's already doing big damage. We need to adapt to this new reality before the bills get even bigger.
and more frequent. Thanks to all of you for being part of my program.